So the most popular game in the world right now is actually not Fortnite. It's Apex Legends. So today I'm going to take that as an opportunity to benchmark the most popular game on the planet right now with some budget graphics cards. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today we're going to be benchmarking the new Apex Legends with nine pretty popular budget graphics cards here in 2019 and with a system that you would actually pair with one of these GPUs. And if you're new here and you want to see more benchmarking or PC building videos, then hit that subscribe button down below and also that notification bell. That way you never miss an episode. But yeah. Let's start benchmarking. So for today's video, I have nine budget graphics cards that we'll be testing with today. And I have a feeling that a lot of you are rocking one of these or at least a card with similar performance to one of these. Starting with the Nvidia cards, today we have the GTX 660 Ti, GTX 750 Ti, GT 1030, GTX 1050 Ti, and the GTX 1060 three gigabyte. For our AMD cards, we have the legendary HD 7850, which I recently did an entire video about. We also have the R7 360, the RX 460, and finally the RX 480. Now obviously there's other budget graphics cards on the planet right now like the GTX 960 but I actually didn't find out till it was too late that my GTX 960 doesn't fit in our new Dell Optiplex. This is the new Dell Optiplex that I used with my UFD Tech collaboration video so I think I'm gonna have to switch back to the old Optiplex for these videos. Speaking of that new Dell Optiplex our testing rig today is rocking an Intel i5 3570 clocked at 3.8 gigahertz. It has 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, a 450 watt power supply, and eight Apex Legends is installed on a budget inland 120 gigabyte SSD. Before getting into the actual benchmarks, I just want to remind you guys that the settings that you're about to see for each of these cards are the settings that I would actually use if these were one of the cards that I was working with, and I always tend to aim for that 60 FPS mark. And also, just so you guys know, to keep the benchmarks as consistent as possible, I decided to test all of these graphics cards with the training level and not during an actual online match. Before deciding this, I did run some testing and determined that the performance actually wasn't that much different, so because I can control exactly what happens during the training level, it's the best way to keep all of these cards on a level playing field. And finally, with all that out of the way, here's a chart showing off what every card can do with the exact same settings, 1080p and low with no anti-aliasing. I'm about to dive into which specific settings that you should use with each card after this, but if you wanted to see how all of these cards compare side by side, here you go. So the first card up was the GTX 660 Ti, and here I actually had to crank the resolution down to 720p with medium settings and no anti-aliasing. With this, I averaged right on the money at 60 FPS, you could definitely crank it up to 1080p if you wanted to, but like I said, I always aim for that 60 mark. Next up, we have the GTX 750 Ti, which as you guys know, is a direct competitor with the 660 Ti, and here I kept the settings the exact same at 720p and medium, and here I averaged slightly less at 54 FPS. Getting into the slightly newer cards, the super budget GT 1030 was up next. Once again, I had to use 720p resolution, but actually low settings this time, and here I still averaged a very playable 53 frames per second. The GTX 1050 Ti followed up next, and for the first time during my run, I could actually get the resolution to 1080p with medium settings and still no anti-aliasing, and with this I averaged 52 frames per second. And for our last Nvidia card for the day, the GTX 1060 3GB was up, and in 1080p with high settings and TSAA turned on, I averaged a very solid 66 FPS. Switching over to our AMD cards, the first one up was the HD 7850, and here in 720p and medium settings, I got an impressive 63 FPS average. Definitely take note that this super old and budget card is performing better than the 660 Ti, 750 Ti, and GT 1030. Next up was the R7 360, and in 720p with medium settings, yet again, I averaged once again a solid 62 FPS. The RX 460 was up next, and here we're finally getting into the 1080p resolution with the AMD side, and with low settings and no anti-aliasing, I averaged 53 frames per second. And finally, the last card on our run was the RX 480, and here we could crank up the settings to 1080p and very high with TSAA, and I still averaged over our 60 FPS target mark with 74 Four frames per second. Overall, as you can probably tell, Apex Legends is running pretty smoothly and it's definitely optimized right out of the box and even with these low-end graphics cards. I definitely wish more games launched like this, which is pretty crazy considering that this one was a surprise free-to-play title. Well, there you have it. That wraps up my Apex Legends benchmarking video with nine budget graphics cards. Now, feel free to head on over to one of these two videos if you haven't seen them yet and definitely hit the subscribe button because later this week, I got yet another build guide coming. You don't want to miss that video.